That's Gucci, everybody. Hi, everyone. It's AJ here. Sorry. <laughs> Sound like I have black long there for a second, but I just wanted to try an exciting intro. And before I start this video, I just want to note that in the comments below, I created a gist of all the commands that I'm going to be going over here. Um, Git gist is just a part of GitHub where it, you can put little code comments that you want to share. And so I have a gist of all the things that I'm going to show you guys so you can copy them and follow along and not have to go through this whole huge video if you don't want to. So what I'm going to talk about here is the git config file. Now, git config allows you to add settings and configurations, that's why it's called git config, to git. And this, this can help you with aliases, editors, and your username and email. And that's why it's powerful is that you can have all these settings. And so you can set these settings customly, or how most people set them is you set them globally by having a git config git config directory in your root directory. So if I do, um, let's open it up, sublime slash dot git config. And so this is my git config file. And around here it has all these aliases and it has kind of all these things I like to know, like my email and which tools I want to use for merging and such like that. And so that is my git config file and you guys should have one too and it allows me to kind of um, have settings that are permanently saved so git knows how to use and so if you want to associate your git with github you need to set a username and an email usually and the easy way to do this is with this simple command you can do git config global again i have this all in the link below in this gist and you can see it right here on screen username and then i you can set your um, username to whatever you want. I'm not going to click this because I already have it configured, but you can just set your username and then you can set your email, which is what GitHub is going to look at to track your commit history and track if you're allowed to represent, look at this repository, and also any other kind of remote repository is going to do the same. It's going to say, hey, is this, are you going to configure to the right email? So then you can do config global and make sure you give it the global option because that will permanently set it for each project. And you probably want these things like email and um, email and username to be set for each project. So you can do git config email. And what also I love to do is you can also do aliases. So you can also make your command shorter or maybe make a very verbose command um, very easy. For instance, I have I aliased LG right here to this huge command, which I've showed you guys frequently in some of my videos, is this really nice really nice branching structure where it shows you, you know, when you committed, which branches you're on, the commit ID so you can easily reset or go to them, and kind of a little um, semantic of branching history, which is really cool, of how your branches have branched off, which is awesome, and who committed, it's really nice. And so that's what this command is. I made another video about that, but you can just get that right there. And also I made a really simple command for git a, so I can do git config global alias dot a and then you can in the quotes you can do whatever command you want now you still need to do git a you still need to put git before for the git config to say oh this is an alias for a git command to look it up so you still need to say git before that if you want to create a git alias without git you have to go into your bash rc file which i have another video on also something i like to do a lot is the default editor for Git is usually Vim, but you can change that if you want, and I have mine configured as Sublime, and you can do that with this command right here. You can do git config global editor Sublime, and so I can set my core editor of Sublime. Make sure you give it that W switch, because that W switch stands for wait, and if you don't wait, what happens is um, when git commits, it wants an automatic response. It, want, it says, hey, I want an automatic response, and Sublime isn't going to give it that automatic response. It's not going to pause the commit for you. It's things like Vim will by default, but for Sublime, you have to give it the wait switch so it will wait until you close that um, config file, and then it will commit accordingly, and it's really nice. And that's why I love about this is you can easily set, like, awesome things like that. So I can set Sublime to be, you know, my commit my commit history editor or anything associated with Git will open up in Sublime. And then also if you want to just see all these settings in the end, you can do git config list and then you can see all your settings. So you can see, for instance, if you updated, I have like all my aliases, if, I, if you updated your name right or updated your email right. And that's pretty nice too. And it also shows me information about exactly this repository. 
Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you guys have a great, great day, best day of your life. Have, see ya. Hi again, everyone. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys for liking, subscribing, and commenting on this video. If you want to watch more videos of the same category, you can click over here. And if you want to watch any new videos and learn something new, you can click over here. Have the best day of your life.